Hi guys, today I want to talk about luck. I know it might seem intuitive that to believe in luck is to kind of disempower yourself, to take away the emphasis from the grind, the hustle, the hard work that has to go into it. Which is true, but like, there is a flip side to it. Because believing, not believing in luck means that you believe that everything's kind of determined. That if you put enough hard work into it, you will get results. Which it's kind of like a maths equation, like, you know, 1 plus 1 equals 2. But then if you see 2 and you start judging everyone by the results, that's where it gets kind of nasty. So for yourself, if you feel it's empowering to be just like, no, it's totally up to me, it's my responsibility, I own this, I'm in charge, I'm moving forward. Fine, great, move ahead. But when you apply that same logic to other people, and you say, okay, what are your results? That can be harsh, essentially. Like, it's the reason why we, like, when we first meet people, we ask, like, what do you do? Because we put so much weight on the monetary value of what you do. Um, okay, I'm speaking too abstractly. Let me give you an actual example. Imagine I wrote a book and it didn't sell or something like that. Does that make the book any less good? As in like, on average, as in like, just as a broad brush, brush stroke rule, am I going to pick up a, like a bestseller or just some random books? Like the bestseller is probably better. Totally fair. But when you're evaluating the person, the author behind it, you meet them on a night out or through a friend or something like that, and they've wrote a book. Do you dismiss them instantly because their book wasn't successful? Because... I think most of us kind of do. It's like, well, well, and like a book takes a lot of work. That's like a year or two minimum of like a lot of work. Here's another one. Game of Thrones, one of the biggest TV shows ever. Those books were around for a long time and weren't worth that much and didn't, excuse me, didn't sell as well as they do now. So has his work become more valuable? Has the book become, his work has become more valuable, obviously. But has the book become any better or worse itself? Like the actual creation, has it become any better or worse? No. So even when it wasn't selling as good or something like that, it was still an amazing book. And if you met him at the time, you'd just be like, lad, that's an amazing book. Or you should have. You wouldn't want to write him off straight away. Again, if you're in the bookstore, go ahead, get the bestseller, go for the popular books uh, until you run out of them and then go into the more um, niche ones. But if you're meeting a person, while it might be an indicator that that person might be full of shit or might be kind of misguided or might just, might not be as high up on intelligence or something like that, it might be an indicator or it might just be an indicator of poor advertising or poor marketing or poor, I don't know, people skills when he does the meet and greets or something like that. Do you get me? Okay, so this is when you meet other people. I do want you to be more compassionate, more empathetic, more just conscious of this fact. So give them a couple of extra questions before you judge them on what they do. But really what I actually want you to take away from this is how you treat yourself. Because obviously that's like, I'm here for the individual. Like, So how you talk to yourself. Sometimes it's good to give you that push. It's all up to me, it's on my shoulders, it's my burden to bear. But to discount luck just means that when the results don't come, it shatters you, which is very difficult. It's like, and your delivery, your sales pitch will be worse as well because you'll go in and you'll be like, hey, here's my product, here's my company, here's my book, here's my painting, here's whatever. And this is awesome. And you're just like, oh yeah, that's really cool. It's like, okay, what ones have you done before? And you'll show them the ones you did before. And you're like, they're like, you can see the development of gotten better. But like, you know, there's some of them that are really good. Awesome, okay. What are your numbers so far? And that's where a lot of people die. That's where a lot of people are just like, um well like you know and they get ashamed 
because they know that they're being judged on it. But what you need, if you are a creator, if you are a business person, you need to value the business separate from its monetary value. Because you need to value it on either impact or just ha- like, is it, is it a true representation of where your talents are at the moment? Because if so, you're, you're there, like that's you pushing forward, awesome. Is it you stretching yourself? Is it creating connections with other people who are in the same industry? awesome like as in like look back on like steve jobs didn't he like when he got fired from apple or whatever he made something like just alongside so that he could come back in it's just like it's that sort of thinking like the company itself sucked but steve jobs knew the value of being needed by or making connections of staying in that world and he did and he got back into apple and whatever so my point is to maybe give yourself a break, essentially. There's there's a really interesting fact about how we talk about people at the bottom of the ladder, bottom of the pyramid, that you're like lower working class. Like we like at the like nowadays you say like losers or deadbeats or I don't know, like waste of space or like whatever. It's very derogatory. Where in Victorian times or like eighteen hundreds and before and all the rest, um the lower class were referred to as unfortunates because it was acknowledged that fortune, luck played a big role. Because if you really think about it, having the talent, having the skill gets you to middle class or something like that. And maybe it gets you higher, like grant, but to jump up to the next level, like it's it's just, it's a, it's a floor. It's like, it, you have to have you have to be working 16 hours a day. You have to have the talent, the skill, the communications, the personality to sell it or something. Maybe you don't need it, but the company needs a face for all of these. And if you have all of these, then you're at the best chance of having a breakthrough, of getting that jump, getting that viral video, viral whatever, where you have the jump. It is down, to, like, there's a portion that's down to luck. So really what you're trying to do, when you're honing your craft, when you're just working on your project, your company, your uh, your craft, whatever it is, when you're working on it, what you're really trying to do is to be in the best position. As in, like, try and make a life for yourself. Try and push forward. Try and make you the best you you can be. And But if you have that, like superstar thing in mind if you have that like change the world change something big something bigger what you're really trying to do is just be at the cusp be at the edge be at the forefront be pressing against the wall so that when a break does when an opening comes up or whatever you'll be there to see it you'll be able to take advantage you'll be the person that gets through that makes the break that gets lucky that they see it, that they see it first, that whatever. There is luck. So be forgiving. And when you are selling your product, selling your company, selling whatever, when they ask you what the numbers are, you can hold your head high and just be like, we haven't got them yet. We're just a startup. Or it's not there yet. Honestly, like, uh, numbers aren't great. Just be totally blunt and be able to say it with confidence, with like, I st- like, I'm not ignorant to the fact that the numbers are bad. I'm not stupid. I'm not naive. I'm not some child that's like ignoring the bad numbers and just pretending it's all okay. That's not what I'm doing. I'm fully aware that the numbers are bad and I'm coming to you trying to sell you my company, my product, my art, whatever it is. I'm coming to you because I think there's value there. I just don't think everyone's seeing it yet. And that's your sales pitch. And you need to treat yourself that way too. People mightn't see it. That's okay. And I'm not trying to mind you here either. I'm trying to get you to mind yourself. Have resilience. Have that fortitude. Have that vision where, like, you know, you don't care if the world gets in the way. It's just up to luck. Whether you get there or not, it's just like, if you didn't get there and you tried your best, that happens. 
And that's okay. And you still push forward and you still go. It's not defeat. At all. Maybe you'll have better luck next time. Maybe you'll just go again. Maybe you'll keep going with it. That'd be awesome. But to believe that luck does not play a part is dangerous and is somewhat mean-spirited if you apply to other people. And also if you apply to yourself. It's basically, it's harsh. Because then if you are not being rewarded, then you have not added value according to that logic. Because value gets rewarded. So therefore, if you are not being rewarded, if you do not have money at the moment, if you are not getting paid for whatever hobby or for whatever you're doing, if just money's tight, it means that you're not offering value according to that thought process. When luck does not play a part and when when everything isn't taken into consideration, it's not as easy as that. It's not... Maybe you're on the way, maybe you're in college and it's all a promise at the moment, but like it will pay off. At the moment you might not have value, but there's potential value there or whatever. Or maybe you're doing art and all the rest and maybe people just aren't seeing it. Or a hundred different things. Maybe you're selling it to the wrong crowd. Maybe you haven't found your crowd. Maybe you haven't found whatever else. There's a hundred different things, but it does not mean what you're doing is not creating value. It just means that the world hasn't acknowledged it, hasn't given it a price tag yet. Even though there's plenty of things that we totally value that we do not put a price tag on anymore. So there's my rant. And that's what I want you to take away is just be a little bit more compassionate and empathetic to other people. Give them a little bit more space just to explain who they are before you judge their intellect or their ability or their value in the world. And also apply that same thing to yourself. Whatever you're creating, whatever your hobby is, do not dismiss it just because the world has not rewarded it yet. If you believe there is value there, follow it. Do it anyway. Do it because there's other value there. It doesn't all have to be for money. So, that's what I'm going to say for today. That is it for today. I will see you again tomorrow. Bye, guys.